Right, so today's YouTube video is currently in the process of editing right now and I'm going to just kind of insert this little clip in at the start of the video. And the reason I'm going to insert this little clip into the start of the video using my phone because um, let's just say this video is the first video done with a wireless lapel microphone which was a cheapy wireless lapel microphone and my new camera. It turns out that technology gremlins have decided to creep up with me and also the subject is buy cheap buy twice is a general rule so i will i'm basically slipping this little clip in now just to apologize because the whole footage taken with this particular video it sounded like it was absolutely tipping down with rain or there was like a hundred people rustling crisp packets whilst i'm speaking however the audio isn't too bad as in what i mean by that is you can just about make out what i'm saying while i'm talking it's while i'm not talking there's a lot of static and a lot of interference which i was kind of hoping wouldn't be too bad hopefully you can try to enjoy the content in this video as i've already recorded it at least you'll be able to see what's going on if you don't if you can't bear the sound i'm sorry i apologize Let's just say this microphone will not be getting used again in any of my videos unless I know for a fact that isn't going to do this. Hope you enjoy. Welcome back to another video on my little blue ZX's uh, 1.9 diesel engine. Uh, apologies for the last video because we was uh, unable to install the head because we didn't have the correct head bolts. We do however now have the correct bolts to install this. So. Um, the plan of action today is we're going to have to take the actual engine off of the stand so we can install a flywheel onto it just there and the reason we're going to have to do that is because when i put the head on the next jobs will be to put the fuel pump on and a few other accessories and then finally after that's all done we're then going to need to put the timing belt on i cannot time this engine up until unless i've got the flywheel on it so i'm thinking while we're here, we need to put the flywheel on, set the lower lower half timing up, and then we can install the head. So um, that's basically all of what today's video is going to be. If you'd like the sound of following me through that, stay tuned and we'll do that. So as you can see guys, the engine is upside down on the floor um, and not on the engine stand. I need to quickly yank this um, engine bracket off. The way I do that is just undo all its bolts here, like so. That's one engine stand out the way now. Right, so this is the side that goes to the engine. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes in it. And there's one, if you can see that, just in the middle, which is off centre. That is a locating lug for us to um, put it in at the correct location onto the uh, bottom crank. So when we locate that up, we put the eight uh, bolts in, I believe they're 17, but I'll check that in a minute. Um, and then we'll then tighten the eight bolts up and then we'll have these hub other holes. One of these will match up nicely to where we need to put the eight mil bar in to time the engine up. And yep, they are a 17 mil socket. These do need to go in with thread locker on and be tightened up to a specific torque. I really can't worry about that just yet because I'm just putting the flywheel on literally just so i can keep the engine in time and i will worry about putting thread locker and tightening them up to the specific torque at a later date right so guys that's uh, that done and i'm going to get this put back onto the uh engine stand stand bracket and put it back on the engine stand and then i'll bring you back and we'll get the head installed so guys as you can see it's back on the engine stand and we have temperate well basically we've got a timing pin just here we've rotated the uh, engine to top dead center and what that means basically piston one and four will go up and down at the same time same rate and piston two and two and three will go up and down at the same rate top dead center is when piston one and piston four are at the top very most top of their stroke of going up and down and i've literally just popped these uh, pulleys on just temper loosely so that's that one that one can come off as well for now so that's that and then i'll take that keyway out so i don't lose it because if i rotate the engine it's going to fall straight on the floor and just disappear never to be found again so that's them off we don't need them on just now 
because I have, like I said, I've and uh, any eight millimeter threaded bar or any eight millimeter bar of any kind, or a little hack I've just done is an eight millimeter drill. As long as it keeps the engine in position as to where it is, and it keeps this all timed up, that's uh, perfectly capable of doing the job because there's not really going to be any strain on it it's just so when we do get to putting the time belt on it'll all be lined up and we know it's all good and not going to be out of sync on the timing so i'm going to put you on the tripod we'll get the head gasket installed and we'll get the head installed so guys we've got our brand new head gasket just here this will only go on one way round and you'll see that there's a angle shape there there's a piece just here that's it Basically, this this hole here lines up with this, and obviously this will pull out and push back in. It has all been cleaned up, even though it may not look like it, it has all been cleaned up and uh, made sure it's completely smooth. So now we'll just put this on. Like I said, it won't go any other way. If we try putting it that way, the hole won't line up, and none of the others will. So that one will just literally slot straight over there like so. So now all we do is we literally drop the head well not drop but place the head back onto its location and that should just slot into place on the locating pin like so and the very first job i'm doing is i'm going to put every single one of the head bolts in just a couple of turns and just so we know guys these are old versus new um the old one's still got the washer on so if i literally put these end to end like so against the washer you will see there's a little tiny gap there so without the washer Washer now removed, without the washer, they are perfect length on both ends and that's that basically. So if I hold that like that, you'll be able to see that they're perfect length, touching at both sides. But because they was installed with the washer, like that with the old bolt, the washer's going to come off, the bolt's going to go in the bin, and then the new bolt goes through and I'm going to reuse the old washers because I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll be fine, they're only washers at the end of the day. Um, it's not like they're going to snap under tensile strength like the old bolts might do. So every bolt is going to have a washer. I'm just going to literally put one into each hole just to know. Basically, this is more so just so I know the head is in the completely the right location. Another advantage about using new bolts, even though it is always advised to use new bolts, another advantage is they're nice and shiny to match a nice and shiny engine. So I mean, I've not quite lined everything up. So I had to move that just to get that to go down there. And that's exactly why I'm doing this. So like I said, at this precise moment, because they're so loose, it doesn't really matter about any sort of tightening sequence, any sort of tightening pattern at the moment, because like I said, I'm literally just making sure all the holes are filled so the head don't fall off, basically. Right, so that's all done now. Um, and I know it may seem to some people like I'm wasting my time, but... and you may disagree with me doing this with every single bolt in a couple of turns and knowing it won't come out and then i'm then going to take it what i'm then going to do is i'm then going to take the uh bolts back out put some oil on them and then just literally wind them all the way in so they they just seat nicely on the top there but the reason i do that is because i like to just double check before i do anything else like setting up any torques or anything just double check that every screw, that every bolt that I'm going to put in, it's quite important to have every single one going nice and neatly and completely threaded nicely. So it, that's why I like to, like I say, just double check. It's a fail safe, basically. I like to make sure that they will screw in where they need to go. That way I know this is completely in its right location. I know every single hole matches up perfectly because every single bolt is turned in nice and lovely. Um, by hand and they're all still really loose so like i say it doesn't really matter about torque sequence or timing patterns at this precise moment now my plan is to pretty much do exactly the same as i've done again but pull them out one at a time i'm going to dip them in some engine oil so basically what's going to happen now is they're all going to come out they're all basically i'll show you what i'm going to do i'll just do that i'll do it with a couple and he says can't find no engine oil engine oil engine oil where are you is that old or new new lovely right so we have some engine oil and what i'm literally going to do i also need my torque key because i didn't use that a minute ago okay i have prepared myself for fitting of the head but 
I didn't realise that I prepared myself for the end of the head. So I've actually got the torque key out already, which is a 55. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but that's a 55 star end, just like so, because it matches in perfectly with the head bolt. That's obviously not one of the new ones, but it's fine. It's just easier for me to show you that because these new ones are all in. Right, so this is what my plans are. The washers can sit there if they stay there because there's a little recess so the washers can stay on there for now <clears throat> we're literally just gonna so as you should be able to see there the engine oil on the bolt is a different color it's gone all the way up to this mark just here that's clean fresh engine oil that'll then go straight into there like so and then literally all i will do is i will wind that all the way home by hand just like that and I'm going to do that for every single one. This is where the tightening sequence does come into play a little bit in my eyes. And the tightening sequence for this is in the middle in the middle of the injectors is number one, two, work towards the gearbox number three, four, back to me, five towards the timing belt, six, over the back, seven, eight, nine, ten, and like that. So that's how the tightening sequence is. And like I say, now it's going to be a case of just like, as you saw, put some oil on these, and again, dripping. Get it in there quick so I don't get oil all down the side of the engine. So guys, we've been through the tightening sequence, and I have now nipped all these up, very uh, slight firmness, with my uh, 3.8 ratchet and the 3.8 extension, with the also with the 3.8 uh, attachment for my Torx bit. I now have because I'm going to be using the torque wrench, I now have a half inch socket attachment for my torque bit, half inch extension, and my torque wrench is half inch, so that's all going to be um, for the torque settings, because we've got to get some serious torque behind these. Now, in the Haynes manual, it says here, non-turbo 1992, uh, cylinder head bolts, non-turbo 1992, we're going to ignore that, that's the top one, so we're going to ignore that because the reason we're going to ignore that is because my car is a 1995 model. And then the bottom one out of the three options is turbo models, so again we're going to ignore that one because my car doesn't have a turbo. So the middle settings for the torque on the Haynes, as far as what the Haynes manual says, and this is what I'm going to go with, um, non-turbo models, 1993 onwards, which is the bracket that my one falls into, it's a three-stage procedure. Stage one is going to be tightening all the bolts up to 20 newton meters, which is also 15 foot pounds of torque. But I don't really know those figures, I'm just reading it off of here. Stage two, which will be the second time round, we're going to tighten them a second time. Stage two will be 60 newton meters or 44 foot pounds of torque. And the third and final stage will be angle tighten, and that means I've got to turn them by 180 degrees. So the, uh, my uh, torque angle gauge will come out to play again for that third and final stage. So let's get these torqued up to 20 newton meters first, following the sequence of what I showed you just a moment ago in the uh, video. And we'll get these torqued down to 20 newton meters first of all. I have already got my torque wrench set to 20 newton meters, starting at number one. And now number 10 and the final one. All done. That is all now torqued to 20 newton meters. And now what we've got to do is we've got to set the torque wrench up for 60 newton meters for stage two. That one. Also, guys, as soon as the ratchet, as soon as the torque wrench clicks, that is it. It's done. Don't go on it again because when it clicks, it's at the torque setting. If you go like double click or anything like that, you're potentially turning the bolt, and it's then going higher torque than it should be. So that is all them now done and the reason I say you don't want to once it clicks you don't want to go any further because I know these have got to be tight but at the same time if you get something as important as head bolts wrong it can be a whole world of pain because if you do them too tight they still can snap. I have had that happen on an old Rover engine which I was working on I have got in the process of putting it together I read the wrong specifications of Torx and uh, brand new head bolts I had one snap on me and it was not fun, not fun at all. But 
never mind. I had to actually get some help with that to get that sorted. So I decided to bring you in nice and close with this, guys. Because basically we've got this torque fit on my angle gauge. We've also got a little screw thread on here which we have to undo loosely. And um, basically we just pop the torque bit on there so it's nice and firm. We then grab the screw bit. Where are we going to place this? I think what we're going to do is we're actually just going to let it rest up against the side. So I've got to push that through there like so. Through this, through this little hole just here. Like so. And tighten that up. Like that. That will now sit onto there. And we'll just turn that so it goes, and you can see that's completely out of line. Now we'll just turn the um, glass bit with the pin on it to zero. Now what we've got to do is we've got to get that glass pin, the line there, all the way round to 180 <coughs> and do that on every single bolt. So if you can see that, let me zoom you in a bit more. One second. Oops, press the button. As you can see, that is now on the 180 mark. So guys, uh, that is done. So you've tightened all the rest up by the uh, 180 degrees and I've done all that off the camera. Also, before I go, I would like to say I hope the content on this video is coming through with nice, crisp, clear audio because I'm using a wireless lapel microphone and I am also using something else other than my phone. Basically the first video with my new camera. I'm not going to give too much away just yet because what I would like you guys to do for me is this is video one of three that I'm the first three videos I'm going to do with this camera and obviously today's video is Monday's video the next video on Wednesday will be the second video I do with this camera and then the third and final video will be well not the third and final that sounds wrong the third and final video before my Sunday special will be Friday's video and I have recorded the Sunday special on my already on my phone regarding this camera and i will warn you guys now it is basically before i've had a chance to really play with it so i in that recording i don't really know what sort of where i'm sort of at so um this is video one of three that is going to be out just before the sunday special regarding what this camera is and what i've got and what i've got to do i would like a little bit of feedback from you guys because the reason i'm doing this is because my phone's getting a bit tired um, it's perfectly capable of doing it it's just starting to slow down a little bit and I've decided I want something a bit more dedicated for the YouTube channel which is a bit better than the potato I tried to use for the Vauxhall Sephira video which actually didn't give me any footage whatsoever but anyway guys if you'd like to know what I get up to throughout the day and also if you'd like to find out what this camera is you can head over to my Instagram page that's uh, the ZX guy same as YouTube and um, Finally, I, I'm going to have another amazing video just in this corner today. And also, I'm going to have my subscribe icon here. Please consider subscribing. Take care, guys. Bye for now.